the standard model Higgs boson is probably the most elusive particle in physics. It has been hunted since almost 50 years and now we are so excited because we might be seeing the first hints of its presence. Clearly the most important uh, goal of this particular year is the search for the standard model Higgs boson. With five inverse frame to bar each experiment, we might be able to see the first hints of this elusive particle. We have enough data to really dig into them very carefully to look for elusive signals. It has been a fantastic year. Uh, we started with the idea of collecting maybe one or two inverse frame to bar and we end up collecting five inverse frame to bar. This was really the dream because with this amount of data we might address some of the major goals of the experiments. We have analyzed very quickly the huge amount of data collected in 2011, something like five inverse femtobarn of data, and uh, with this data we know now that uh, we can exclude the presence of the standard model Higgs in a wide region of mass uh, from 600 GeV down to 130 GeV. We cannot exclude more at lower mass because we see excesses of events in the low mass region between 115 and 130. In addition, in this region there are excesses whose statistical significance is not large enough to claim that we have a discovery, but they're very suggestive of the presence of a standard model Higgs. I would say they are consistent with the presence of a standard model Higgs. First of all, there is not a precise uh, prediction of the mass of the Higgs boson. This was not the case of W and Z. It was known quite well the region in which we had to look at. Secondly, the background conditions for W and Z, in particular for the Z, the background condition was basically zero. There was nothing happening behind the, the signals that we were looking for. While for the Higgs boson, particularly in the low mass region that we are looking at in these days, uh, the background there is very high. Finding the Higgs changes our vision of the world, matter and the universe. We understand very well why weak interactions are so different from electromagnetic interaction in terms of range. Being the carriers of this interaction, the photon, being so light and the W and Z so heavy. This is exactly the mechanism which is due to the presence of the Higgs boson. Our world will be completely different without this mechanism. Uh, first of all, we have to uh, look into our data individually in a way in which is completely independent one from the other to avoid any kind of couplings between the two experiments. We have two completely different observations. Once this is done, coupling together, combining together the data will enhance the sensitivity. It's like having not five but ten inverse femtobarn of data and clearly the significance or any excess will be increased as well as the potential of exclusion limits. We miss additional data, analysis of additional data. We miss the combination with Atlas and CMS results. We need the comparison, detailed comparison of what our friend and brother experiment Atlas is seeing. And only after this work will be done, we might reach a conclusive statement. A few months, a few months for a, from from a few months to a year. Uh, knowing the mass, in particular if uh, the standard model Higgs boson exists and it is at low mass, we have the need of new physics. We know there will be inconsistencies. We need something very heavy protecting the standard model Higgs from divergences. So it's the first indication, first of all, that the standard model is complete, but we need something else beyond the standard model to make it fully consistent. <laughs>